Good morning and welcome to our Dream of the Woods. It's a beautiful September morning. Uh, you can hear the squirrels chirping in the background. Um, out here to do a little log yard uh, organization and today I'm uh, building some bunks to store lumber on. Um, I need to do a total of seven of these. I have three already completed. I'm going to try to do two more today. Um, it's not my favorite project to work on. It's, a little, it's knees on the ground. It's kind of tedious work, um, but it needs to be done uh, so we can store the lumber for the barn and let it dry over the winter. So there you can kind of see it is pretty level. I'm less concerned with that than just being nice and flat. So like this one here needs to come down you know, about a half an inch or so. And then on down the bunks. So basically it's not, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just using a long straight edge. Uh, it is a level, but I'm basically just using it as a straight edge. And then I get the center bunks level and then keep on going down the side so they all touch. Um, and then adjust as needed. So um, like this one has to come down about a half an inch. So I dig it down, test it again, go on to the next one. All right, so that project went okay. Um, try to get it as flat as I can with the skid steer, but there's only so much a machine can do. Um, and I'm not very good at running that machine, but this bunk actually wasn't too bad. So then my next step is going to be put plastic underneath. I'm putting the plastic in uh, basically uh, to keep the ground moisture to, from coming up and spoiling those bottom uh, bunks. That's something I got off the Shelter Institute. Um, some people I see don't think it's needed, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. So uh, then I poke a bunch of holes in the plastic so the water drains out from the top and then just as a barrier from the moisture coming up from the ground.
just wanted to show you a little bit about what I've been doing to organize the log yard uh, behind me here and uh, what preps I've been doing to get ready to saw lumber for the barn. Uh, a lot of those uh, log decks we made last winter and we just, you know, when you're logging and you, you just kind of open up the ground, the logs kind of went where they went. Well, there's a couple things we should have done. Should have uh, put them, put some uh, sacrificed logs down uh, to put the logs on to keep them up off the ground. Uh, so there's less moisture and less deterioration or rot on the logs. So I had all of my nice dug fir logs were sitting on the ground and so I moved those um, in the background of the, the big stack there and then kind of separated out to this uh, group here and that's going to be a mixture of some saw logs, some firewood and then I'll use some of those logs to then lay down as sacrificial log, logs to get the next uh, set of logs off the ground just to be ready for the winter time. Um, still haven't done anything uh, drastic with the lodgepole pine, uh, ponderosa pine um, log deck. Uh, those need to be sawed for sure this uh, fall, so I'm going to be working on those. So I just figured I didn't, I'm not going to move those, but uh, we're going to get those sawed up. Um, this fall so that's an update there the other thing i did was it was all uh, real bumpy and and junked up and all that kind of stuff so i, I tried to smooth out everything fill in the holes uh, take out some rocks and some limbs and some stumps and then uh, with that tried to uh, get it as smooth as possible it, it turned into a big dust pile inches three, four, five, six inches thick. It was just uh, powdery dust. And so I knew there was um, weather coming in. And so I tried to get it all smooth and flat. And then we had about a third of an inch of rain. Uh, and so that's compacted the soil pretty well. I haven't, I've tried not to drive on it with the skid steer. Just kind of let it sit and, and uh, harden up. Um, but it won't take much with the skid steer to churn that back up. But at least it'll be smooth and uh, better than it was. So. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, made uh, down the little side road here, made uh, five of the seven log uh, lumber bunks that I need to make. Um, and so I determined that I need seven off of the cut list uh, for the, the barn, uh, varying size, sizes and organizations there. Um, and varying lengths, so I got from 20 foot down to 10 feet and a bunch of different sizes in between. So not a project I really like, but at least I've got five out of the seven done. Uh, I need to cut some more firewood to kind of make some more space for the additional two bunks to get uh, put in. So I'll just show you around here. This is the lodge pole jack pine deck. Um, a lot of people consider those logs to not be that good, but we're lucky enough to have some good lodge pole on the property and it seems like it's making good lumber. Uh, this kind of pine tends to blue and we'll show you more of that, but uh, it's basically it's the start of deterioration and it, it uh, has a blue tinge to the, the lumber. Um, I think it's cool. Some people select for that. Uh, you can buy it in the store and it, it's more money, but uh, uh, people have debate on whether it you know, structurally changes the wood once that it's a fungus that, that causes it to be blue. So definitely gonna um, take care of this pile this fall. Uh, the white there, I painted the ends of all the dug fur. I uh, didn't do it to this pile and probably should have, just kind of ran out of time and energy and never did it. So, um, but pretty good stack of lumber there. And then swinging around here, this is kind of where I smoothed everything out much better. And then I restacked all these. This is, should be all dug fur here. Um, most of the links are 19 to 21, 22 foot. Um, 
one shorter, just depending. But uh, this is all pretty premium, premium stuff here. Uh, some of it's got a little bow to it, but uh, some of them are just big pumpkins. Um, great beams, uh, great lumber out of those. Uh, working with Doug fir, definitely a difference than working with the pine species. This is the little access road going to our house uh, that we rent at the between the properties here, um, and just have some some firewood there that I collected last winter and then another little deck of firewood there and then I have five bunks here so I picked this spot because it was adjacent to where we're going to be cutting the lumber and it's shaded and I have easy access in between uh, be able to actually pull through here with the trailer and get the the lumber put in the right spot. Uh, my daughter and I, Carlin, we cut a lot of stickers. And that's that pile right there. I have no idea if that's enough stickers, uh, but my guess is about six or seven hundred stickers. And the stickers will go in between the lumber to let air circulate so it dries evenly and doesn't warp so but then i smooth this road out it, this is way better than it was before and you can actually walk on it without it being in a dust ball so this group of six by sixes this is just me kind of playing with the sawmill and some of them will be used some of them won't be used uh, i think some of those Shorter ones are too short for any six by sixes that I need, but they'll still come in handy. Uh, the last thing I have here is some old tin. Um, kind of been collecting some tin to then cover those logs, uh, the lumber, once they, they start getting stacks going. So, um, yeah, that's the organization there. You can see the, the sawmill in the background. Just a little update on the lumber bunks. Um, fast forward now we're um, mid to late November. Um, and lumber bunks have been put to use but haven't really kind of come to a standstill here lately after Lars and I did some milling. This is one of the five lumber bunks that I got finished so I got some Three by sixes on that pile, uh, two by sixes on this next one. Uh, then the other ones, I just have one beam there. Uh, and then I had intentions to get uh, seven bunks done, but that didn't happen. Uh, time ran out, and I'm not going to do it now that the ground's frozen. And not too good. Some of these bunks kind of look like rickety uh, railroad tracks. Uh, so once we put a, a beam up there, we'll be able to tell and I'll just shim them 
uh, so everything sits flat, but uh, they'll still serve the purpose. And I think the attention to detail that I did, it, it'll help, but they sure don't just visually look like they're that flat, especially that far one looks like it's up in that one corner. So, and then you can see that I got the tin covering them. Uh, there's not a lot of drying that happens over the winter, but at least it'll keep them out of the, the weather and still get an air circulation. Um, they shouldn't be, they should be in good shape uh, through the winter and into next uh, spring and summer. So uh, working like they should. Hope that gave an overview of the lumber yard organization. Um, Again, remember to like and subscribe, uh, hit that alert button, um, leave a comment, see what I could have done better. Should I use that plastic or is that um, not worthwhile? But uh, I wish I would have got all seven done, but that's how things go sometimes. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.